I'm Bradley Jersak, the author of In, subtitle Incarnation and Inclusion, Abba and Lamb. The question I address in this brief work is how Christ followers might hold the tension of these two abiding and complementary truths. One, Christ's one-of-a-kind revelation, and two, Abba's all-inclusive love. I believe that sacred scripture and Christ himself affirm both these doctrines in a mind-blowing fullness. I'm neither an exclusivist nor a pluralist. I believe in both the unique revelation of Christ and the all-inclusive love of Abba. So throughout the pages of In, I lay out biblical and experiential evidence for integrating and celebrating both these truths together, espousing the beautiful gospel of Christ's unique revelation of Abba's all-inclusive love. There was a twofold story that drove my thinking and set me down to writing the book. First, I was disheartened by how many ex-evangelicals and refugees from oppressive Christian subcultures were not only leaving their faith communities, but also far too easily and quickly and frequently disidentifying with Jesus Christ himself. It's one thing to walk away from a hurtful community or from toxic theology, but to deny Christ? Have they not met him? And if not, what an indictment on the church clubs they joined that didn't lead them into the life that Jesus promised. Second, I'm awestruck by the many folks who have met Christ, encountered him prior to or apart from converting to Christianity. Many have experienced God's light and God's word long before they've even heard that Jesus Christ is the light and the way they already know. Then at just the right time, I love to be the witness who, like John the Baptist, shares how the Christ you've known is also the Lamb, the Lamb slain and risen. His suffering means that he knows your suffering, and he walks in solidarity with you. He's united himself to your journey, and his death frees us from guilt and shame as we hear him pray, Father, forgive them, forgive them all. They didn't know what they're doing, and he reconciles the world to God the Father without counting our sins against us. I love to share that his resurrection means that we no longer need to fear death. And most of all, that this Christ is the face of God revealed as Abba, shown to us as a God who is intimate Papa. I'm excited that my readers are going to discover the unique revelation of Christ is not exclusive to the Christian subculture. The all-embracing cross-shaped welcome of God in Christ does not diminish Jesus' singular life. Indeed, the higher our Christology, the broader we'll see Abba's love to be. If Christ's love really is cosmic, then it extends to all. As Paul says, God's love is higher, wider, deeper, and longer than we could ever get our heads around. In fact, it's infinite. You cannot overemphasize the love of God. We know this when we look at Jesus. I'm also excited that the book has potential to open our eyes to Christ in others, those we've often viewed as outsiders. We may start seeing how the Holy Spirit has been at work within people of diverse cultures and faith expressions, gently leading them out of darkness into the Jesus way, despite the worst efforts of Christians who bungled the Great Commission. I'm going to share seven or eight inspiring stories of radical encounters that express this wider hope in the real world. Now, the book does relate to the Bible for normal people in some key ways. First, the book explores texts of scripture from a fresh angle, especially the prologue of John chapter one, where John proclaims a light that shines on all people who are coming into the world and a word that speaks to all people who live in this world. And then he directs us to the Lamb slain and risen for all. And so the vision of John is neither exclusive nor pluralistic. It is radically inclusive. We also explore in some depth the story of Cornelius in Acts, the righteous man who, prior to his conversion, God already affirms as acceptable before him, one who's already been made clean, one whose prayers are already heard, and his generosity acknowledged. Even then, Peter shares good news that dramatically deepens his experience of God, 
the good news of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. At that point, Cornelius is filled with the Holy Spirit, and his life with God goes to a whole nother level. Overall, in also tracks the evolution of true faithfulness. Out of its ancient roots in violent eradication or religious exclusion of the other into Peter and Paul's vision of Abba's all-inclusive love. So we'll watch the grand arc of redemption open up as us-them veils are torn away and everyone gets access to God's love. I'm quite sure that this book will work for normal people who are also open-hearted and thoughtful. If I use big words at times, I'll carefully define them and give examples, so I don't expect anyone to get lost, but I do think the inspiring stories will be more challenging to the heart than to the mind as we realize God's love is bigger than we had asked or imagined. So I hope you'll enjoy in and take the message as something good for you and good for others. Thank you.